All right, so we covered the create action of our application. Now we want to talk about reading the data from our database. On our home page, we want to create some markup and get the data from the database and then show them to the users. Let's go back to the project and open app and then page.jsx, which is our home page. So right here, we want to read from our database and then create some markup for each blog post. Let's start by getting the data from the database. First, I'm going to create a posts collection and similar to previous videos, we just want to await for get collection and then pass down the name of the collection that we want to use. Now, of course, we are using an await keyword here. So let's make our function async. Then from that collection, we want to get all the posts. So let's say posts and we will set this to await posts collection and we can use a find method to get all the resources and we want to get the posts in an array. So we can chain the two array method here. And so we will have an array of objects so we can loop over them. But before doing any of that, let's log that into the console and see what happens. So back to our website, you can see we have an array which is running on the server. And within that array, we have an object with the information about our blog post. Now with this statement right here, we can either check if the post collection returns true and then find all the blog posts, or we can simply add a question mark and say, if the post collection was true, then continue with these functions. Otherwise, just return null. So this posts variable would be empty or null if we are unable to connect to the database. Now let's create some markup first and then we will turn it into a component. So instead of returning the markup right away, let's add an if else statement and check if the posts was true, then return the markup for each post. Otherwise, let's just return a p tag or some other element and say, for example, failed to fetch the data from database. We can make this even simpler by removing these outer div and parentheses and just have one line of code if the posts returned null. Now let's work on this div and add some classes first. So we want to use grid and let's set the column to two. So grid calls two and add some gap, which I will set it to six. Then instead of these H1, we want to add curly brackets and say posts.map. And for each post in that array, we want to create some markup. So I am adding parentheses here. Then I will start with a div. On that div, we need to provide the key attribute or prop, and we will set the value of that to post dot underscore ID. So that refers to this ID in our database. Now inside this div, we will have another div which represents each post. And again, we will turn this into a component, but I'm just going to add the markup first. So I will start with some classes, border, border slate 400 and set the border style to dashed padding four and rounded corners and height full since we are using grid then i will have a p tag here and i will add the classes here text slate 400 and text extra small and right here i want to have the created at date and we will see how we can get that then after that i will have a link component from next.js so let's import link from next slash link and the content of this should be the post title and the idea is that when we click on this title we want to go to an individual page for each post so for now let's add the href and leave it empty but also add some classes so we set the display to block text extra large and font semi bold and margin bottom four after the link component, we will have a p tag with the class text sm and the content of this p tag should be post.content. And that's it for our postcards. Now back to our website, you can see we have our one post. If we create a new post, let's say my second post and add some text here, press submit. We are back to the dashboard, then we can go to the home page and here we have our posts. So we still have to add a few things. First of all, you notice that my second post is showing at the end of the list. So we want to sort this in a descending order. So the newest goes first. Let's go back to our page component. And before this to array method, we can chain the sort method. And as the value, we are going to pass an object within this object, 
we can use a special variable which is part of MongoDB and that is dollar sign natural which then takes the value of minus one so we are sorting it in a reverse so this way our newest items would go first back to the website you can see my second post goes first and then the oldest and so on next we want to grab the date of each post and of course when we create a post we could add a date through a property and then set that to a new date from javascript but using mongodb id we can actually extract the date of the creation of that resource so right here on this p tag where we are showing that text first i'm going to make the text a bit darker so it's easier to see and instead of this created at text we are going to use curly brackets and we want to say post dot underscore id and then on the id which is a special object id from mongodb we want to use the get timestamp so this method will actually give us a timestamp and then on that timestamp we can use the date functions like get the date get the day or for our project we can say for example to locale string so this way we can get the created at date from the id of our resource going back to our website you can see we get the date as well as the time so i thought that's quite neat from mongodb that we can extract the date from their id anyway you can see everything is working properly now we just have to make this into a component so we can reuse it later on inside our components folder I'm going to create a postcard.jsx and this is going to be a very simple React component. So we just want to say export default function. We call it postcard. We want to accept the prop, of course, and that is going to be one single post. And then we want to return our postcard. So we want to go back to this page component, which is our home page, and then grab this div that contains the date, the title, and the content. So let's cut this and paste it here so because we are accepting post as a prop we don't have to change anything here all we have to do is to import the link component from next so let's retype it and here we have our import and let's save this one and close it back to the home page right here in this inner div we want to use postcard and as a prop we want to use this post right here so make sure you are importing the postcard and we can get rid of this link import since we are not using it here. All right, so this should work the same way. Let's log out and let's log in with this user and now create, for example, Mike's post and some text for the content and press submit. We are going to the dashboard and of course, later on we will add a table here, but going back to the homepage, we can see Mike's post goes first and then the rest. So we covered the reading action for our application and the next steps would be updating and deleting a resource.